DJ turn me up, ladies get so jam I'm a silver sky, and you don't need to pay And I'ma throw this money while you do it while you wait Girl, the way you move it, I'm in your trace Rendezvous straight from Manhattan, New York City, <laughs> going crazy with who? Sarah Jean Baptiste, also known as Artistic Remedy. My cousin, my blood, my fam. Thank Sarah, you, thank how you, you doing? How you doing? I'm so happy. Straight from Montreal down to New York. Took a trip. Who is Sarah Jean Baptiste or Artistic Remedy? Um, hi everybody. Um, I am a visual artist and illustrator. I'm based in New York. I have been focusing on fine art and illustration for the past, I would say, honestly my whole life, but I would say I, I work professionally uh, in the industry for about four years. Um, since then, I've been doing my own freelance projects. I've been taking commissions. I do live painting. I do editorial illustration, and um, I'm just excited to see where the future takes wow. me now. <laughs> when you told your parents that, you know what, I want to I wanna do paintings, what, what was the reaction of Matan Tantsudo? How did she react to this? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> Oh, wow. How are you going to get, how are you going to, how are you going to support your life? Oh my you God, know, I mean, reaction. You yeah. know, it's very, it's, it's very, it's very, um, there's a lot of pressure to prove, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, it's very isolating. You really always have to feel like you're, I would say, because, you know, we did grow up in a family where a lot of people went um, towards traditional careers. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I've always seen that, so there's been this wiring in my mind to take it as seriously as someone that does that, just yeah. because I understand like the level of commitment that our parents made and the sacrifices they made to get here. It's like you kind of want to prove to them that, okay, you know, you can really do this and take it seriously. Yeah. So there's this constant, like, in the back of your mind, you're not trying to prove it to them, you're trying to prove it to yourself, but you know that there are people that are depending on you to make your dream come to right. life. So there is that sense of, you know, I'm, I'm doing this with them in mind to prove that, you know, they didn't waste their, mm -hmm. you know, their, their sacrifice. Yeah. Let's go a little further, like you yeah. were saying the process and everything, but there's a story behind your paintings, right? Talk to me about a story that you've experienced. I know you have a few paintings that you've done. There's a story that touched you personally. Yeah. Can you talk to me about that? So for a lot of the time that I was working, I didn't go into my personal life yeah. because I feel like, you know, you're supposed to be catering towards the industry or the market. Um, but there was a series of events in my personal life that I feel like I couldn't express any other way and I, I wanted to take that liberty and take my own skill and bring my personal story to it and make it like a therapy. So I decided to take um, the event of my parents getting divorced and you know, me being a Haitian American artist, which I didn't really see a lot of that in like contemporary time, I felt like you know, there's a lot of European artists or yeah. other artists that we're inspired by, but I haven't really seen someone who's a black female artist, you know, New York native, um, you know, just growing up in the industry and trying to re represent myself yeah. and my story. So I decided to come up with a series that was a tribute to my Haitian heritage and also um, kind of showed the struggle of an identity crisis. Like wow. you're okay. um, coming to your own, you know, after being told who you should be through mm -hmm. what you've seen yeah. and some of the work that you've seen being pushed out and saying, how do I tell my story? You know, I'm sure someone else can relate to it, but maybe I have to do it first, you know? Wow. Like maybe okay. that's, that's the kind of risk that I went through to say, okay, I'm, I'm okay with doing this. And going through that process of that was like a big risk because it was a detour from anything else I've ever done. I never worked with the colors yeah. I worked with. Yeah. I never told, you know, that much of my personal life through it. But I felt like once I finished it, it felt like, okay, I've released that part of me. And now it can be, you know, memorialized through art. What I'm curious about, what is the voodoo moment? The moment in your life when you look back in time and you realize that at this specific moment, I know this is what I want to do in life. Can you define me that moment? There's so many, yeah. you know, um, I feel like, I feel like last summer I went through a lot of personal experience where I was doubting myself mm -hmm. and I had to get out of that situation somehow. And I feel like the only thing I really had to rely on to be my therapy was what I knew was my work. So I found myself creating new pieces, um, you pieces. know, Adam and Eve is a piece that I worked on from that process. 
Um, and I just felt like I had no other way, really. I, I, I oh, feel like a little speechless. I feel like okay. I had to rely on what God gave me. You know, I feel like he didn't give me this gift for nothing. And I know a lot of people fold under pressure when it's time to, you know, yes. really push their dreams. So I felt like I was like, you know what? Am I going to be an example of somebody that gives up and quits? Wow. You know, yeah. or am I going to literally just take that experience and say, what, what, how much better can I get from what I already know? Because you already have the skills. You already have this. You just need to find a way of connecting you know, with other people. And it's not even about you. And I think that's really what it is. You have to get out of selfish ambition and realize that maybe if you didn't do what you're supposed to do, somebody else won't live their dream because they didn't see you do it. Yeah, exactly. And like, that's my thing. Like, in again, genetic makeup, you know, I'm Haitian American, I'm a female, I grew up in the city. Um, I'm an industry where predominantly, I feel like who succeeds don't really look like me or have my story or background. Well said. So because I feel like, you know, I have the ability, I need to use that to open up the door for somebody else. And that's when it became, okay, you know, it's no matter how much you really feel, you still have to try because somebody tried and that's how you saw what you saw. Wow. So you have to maybe pass that torch on too, I, even I, if it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts even if it hurts. Just remembering Bill Cosby's uh, painting that you did on your iPad. <laughs> it wasn't through a, a special time that we all, like the, the black community in the States, even in Canada, Bill Cosby when I was a kid was like, the Cosby show. Right. He's untouchable. Yeah. And the painting you've created is like, brought me te it brought tears to my eyes. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, seriously. I mean, that's another thing. Um, I did spend a lot of time focusing on painting people that we know, yeah. but people I feel like weren't really represented as much um, through art. Um, so that's another that's another side of what I do that I felt like is just super important. I always felt like, yeah, if I don't see myself in art, then how do I connect with it? So, you know, I painted, um, you know, the really famous astronaut Mae Jemison. Yes. Um, yeah. Then, you know, um, Janelle Monet, some musical figures. For yeah. the most part, I was doing a lot of pop art as a way to like break into showing my skill and my work. Um, but yeah, I feel like touching issues like what's going on with the Me Too movement with Bill Cosby. Yes. Here we go, someone we, we, we admired, and then like the reality hits the fan. Yeah. And, you know, here he goes like stripped from all of his like, uh, legacy. status and Stat legacy yeah so it's like you know art has to speak to what's going on as well it can't and you do it well beautiful you do it very well <clears throat> thank you awesome i'm not saying that because you're my cousin i really say it for real as there's a lot of artists that i see and i follow but you i feel like you're the picasso of the family oh <laughs> <laughs> before we get to the sweet questions i want to talk to you about one thing a few years back i think you fought up against being in front of a stage and you did a competition when you had to draw something on a guitar. Can you talk to me about the Oh event? yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that's uh You remember, yeah. I yeah. Do remember. Okay, so yes, um, this is crazy because I can actually tell you the backstory. Yeah, talk to um, me about it. it. I went into this really fearless. Um, I actually was commissioned to paint a guitar live um, during Jay-Z's Made in America concert. Nice. It was the first, sorry, it was the second year that he had it and he was pretty much putting on pre-parties throughout the city of whatever state yeah so basically i was commissioned to paint the new york city guitar but i didn't know it until i actually got to the venue wow. and a lot of people didn't even know that. so like you know i was told by um the hiring party that oh yeah you know um you just you're gonna get five hours and you know just do your thing he's like you, you do you think you can do it? i was like yeah sure no problem i can do it <laughs> yeah I, went, I was like 22 i was like super confident i was like no i don't problem. even know what this is like what, what event is this and i walk in there and i'm like made in america well okay this is serious <laughs> you know they give me the tape and then I have like, you know, my MacBook and I have like 30 minutes to really start busting out. I was like, well, how am I going to represent New York? And I'm like, okay, great. You know, this is awesome. You know, this is exactly what I'm living. It's about the hustle and bustle to survive in New York. Whoa. And that's what I painted. I painted like a collage of the Big Apple and like a lot of people walking down like 42nd Street on the back. And on the front side, I got like a couple of maps and like people trying to make their way through the city. So. I felt like the best thing to do was just portray what New York is yeah. about. And um, they gave me four hours, I literally zoned out and I just got to work and then people are coming up to the table and seeing it happen. Now Sarah, it's time for the sweet six. I'm going to ask you six questions. I don't want you to think. Every time I ask you a question, you, got, you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind, okay? First question. 
If I give you the power today to make a change in Haiti, one change, what would you do? I feel like I would just have to maybe go back and give back. Maybe I'll lead, you know, um, an art therapy session. Start with where I can. If you had to paint your mom in a certain scenery now, what would be that painting about? Hmm. I feel like I would probably paint her on the stage doing poetry. Because I know that's something that she's always wow. wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Something that, you know, I'm sure a lot of people in the family know her as someone that does, like, loves poetry. But I feel like she didn't really realize that uh, for herself. So I feel like that would be a great highlight. Okay. I'm going to give you five colors. And I want you to tell me whatever the color comes to your mind. All right? First color, red. Passion. Blue. Rest. Yellow. Light. Black. Strength. And white. Purity. Purity. Okay. If tomorrow you would lose your arms, what would you do in life? Speak. Speak? <laughs> Speak about life in my experience so far. And just tell people to keep going. All right. If you close your eyes right now and you think about a memory, every time you think about that memory, you smile. Talk to me about that memory. That's seriously something that I'm trying to like really think about because I feel like the last time I felt pure joy, like real pure joy, was probably when I graduated school. I know that may sound really out of place, but it felt like I accomplished something that I was moving towards. And I feel like I want that kind of, that kind of like peace and assurance again. <laughs> nice. For artistic remedy, Sarah Jean-Baptiste, What's the definition of the word passion in a few words? Passion is living out your truest desires with no apologies. Living out the words in my mouth. Awesome. Really? <laughs> you did the sweet six. <laughs> okay. Sarah. Nice. There's one art I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. It's the Black Panther movement. A that movement. Killmonger's Wish. That's the name of the piece. Talk to me about that piece. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, so, you know, Black Panther was, in my opinion, a great step forward in representing, you know, black people on screen the way they did in the, like this utopian kind of paradise. Yeah. But, you know, the line that Killmonger said at the end when um, he was dying after battle was, you know, bury me um, with my ancestors who jumped from ships because they knew um, death was better than bondage. Like that, like, it was like, ooh. Give us chill. <laughs> I was I watching us the movie, chill. like, yeah, I got chills and I was just like, that would be so dope if I could like, you know, represent that in a piece and memorialize like this film yeah. some type of way, but in a way that people, you know, can take with them. And what he was like, in my opinion, the real hero because he said that, because that was something yeah. that I think people are fighting against. Like today, right. people are fighting against being slave to whatever is making them feel like they're yeah. in bondage too. So I just like that mindset he had. Um, and I actually did this piece for a live painting competition. Um, yeah, I remember that competition. Yeah, I, I saw it on, online. Yeah, I did it for a competition, but then, you know, I got, it, it sold on the spot from that night. So then I ended up going back home and doing it again <laughs> so that I could make more copies available yeah. for people. Well, like I said, really the time that we, we took together reminded me that it's important to respect the process. It's important to believe in our dreams. I want to immortalize this moment, this voodoo moment with you, with a little gift. Oh, wow. Thank you can you. open it so it will uh, audience. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. Surprises are weird for me. <laughs> okay. Oh, dope. Nice. Artistic Instagram. Oh, that's me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so fun. Uh, and it was truly an honor to spend some quality time with you today. Sarah Jean-Baptiste, Artistic Remedy, <laughs> Rendez-vous du Voodoo, One Love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>